Everybody knows when you're spraying foam, you need a mask. But what's essential? A good mask you can breathe through. Like this one. All right, let's be honest, guys. This isn't what we're supposed to be using when we're spraying foam. This is actually supposed to be 25 feet from the sprayer. This isn't really clean. Another thing that's essential about a mask is you should get a good tight air seal. Yeah, can't really do that with a beard. Oh, hold on guys. It's also not a good idea to chew in your mask either. I couldn't spit. When you're in the world of spray foam, one of the key things guys, we gotta protect ourselves. We have to protect our respiratory system. We are spraying a fine mist of heated chemicals that really aren't the best for us. So what we wanna do is ensure that we are protecting ourselves. And there's a few rules around that. So let's take a look at it. You know, you look at this. We have many installers that go out and try and use this, as you can see on this one, but this mask is not approved for the person at the end of the gun. This one's obviously been through a lot, we'll say, but it's still not approved for the sprayer unless you're doing low pressure systems. What you have to have as a sprayer is supplied air. So let's look at that. We're gonna go over here first. On supplied air, I can have a tight fitting mask still, but if you remember what I just showed a minute ago, what I can't have is facial hair. You're not going to get a tight seal around here if you have facial hair. And this requires a tight seal. We're doing it because we don't wanna be breathing stuff. So even on this, yes, having a tight seal's great, having no facial hair is great, but I also need to keep this clean. So you wanna make sure you have alcohol wipes so that you can wipe this down every day. That way nothing starts to grow on it or create problems for you. Now, for those that want to keep their beard or just really like the comfort of having a lot of airflow coming in, you also have a hood that you can use. Now the hoods, while I find them very comfortable, the real issue is when you go to turn, the hood doesn't necessarily turn with you. You can turn inside it and then you wind up looking over here at the side and it, a lot of people find that irritating. But what it bothers a lot of other people is when you're actually in a crawl space or in an attic and you're moving around in a tight space, these can be pretty restrictive. The other thing is, what supplies both of these is an air pump. Well, when we look at this air pump, it's a couple of things. Number one, this cannot be left in the space you're spraying in. Wouldn't be fresh air. It also can't be left in your rig. So obviously you've probably got a generator in there, could be carbon monoxide issues, this needs to be in an area where you can bring in fresh air. And if you're using the hood, you really need a two-man air pump in order to supply enough air for the hood. Now you can see a low pressure rig behind me. A low pressure rig, I can use a filter cartridge mask. In the world of high pressure, my helper. Anyone 25 feet from the sprayer can wear a filter cartridge mask. But again, there's a couple of rules about that the filters that you're using on this need to be a P100 filter with organic vapor. It's a two-part filter. That's what we need to have. We also need to keep this one clean. In order to wear either of these two masks, you need to be certified by a health professional and do a fit test every year. So that's what the industry is looking for. So let's look at some of the things OSHA does when we don't comply. I'm not wearing this. It's your health, not mine. All I need you to do is fill out this saying you did. Just fill it out. That's uh, it. Excuse me, sir. You're coming with me downtown. Let's go. The reality is, guys, OSHA's rules have changed, and so have the federal governments. OSHA says that your new fines now, instead of being $5,000 per incident, are now $12,934. But if I willingly make a statement and violate purposefully, it's up to $70,000. That's the OSHA part. From the federal side, if I make a false statement on a record, 
It is $10,000 and up to six months in federal prison. They don't negotiate. So when you look at high pressure foam, this says we need, can you guys read that? Fresh air, absolutely. Where if we're just spraying low pressure foam and it's not putting a bunch of stuff in the air, we only need what's called a filter mask. This is a filter mask. So is this. Which one would you guys wear? This one, all right. If we don't do this right, if I were to tell you guys how to do it, but I told you the wrong way to do it, I could pay a fine. That fine could be $12,984. So if we're spraying high pressure foam, we need to bring in air from outside. So just to recap real quick, if I'm spraying high pressure foam, what do I need? These, absolutely. And low pressure foam, you guys are perfect. Even the children do it. Do it for the children. So now that you have seen what OSHA will do if you do not follow the rules, we can come back and talk about one other thing. I'd like to introduce you to my friends, Polly and Esther. I am wearing them. Don't forget your head sock. This is Ken Elvison with IDI. We're looking forward to earning your business every day. Thank you very much.